So in our gospel today, we need to understand what precipitated this strange question. By what authority are you doing these things? You see, before this exchange happened, Jesus had come into the temple with a whip, and he had turned over the tables of the money changers, driven them out, and said, My father's house is to be a house of prayer, and you have turned it into a den of robbers. They're asking him by what authority he's doing this because he's impacted their money. You see, in that day and time, you could not take civil money into the temple and had the picture of the emperor on it. That's actually why our money has pictures of presidents and famous people on it. It's a copy of the Roman Empire. But you could not bring a graven image into the temple, so you had to take your regular Roman money and you had to exchange it for religious money. And the leaders of the temple figured out this is where we can make some extra money. And the exchange rate is very high. This was an economic question. Jesus was threatening them in their pocketbook. Which leads the question, what is it that God thinks about money? This is the second week in a row that we've had a money-related gospel. Last week we had the story of the workers in the vineyard. Those who came and the, the manager came and hired folks at the very beginning of the day and they agreed on a day's wage. And all through the day he kept coming and getting more and more people. And finally at the end of the day, just before quitting time, he hired the last. Then when it came time to pay, he told his manager, start with the people who were hired last. And the people that were hired last were given a full day's wage. And the folks who were hired at the beginning of the day began to rub their hands together saying, oh, we have gotten a sweet job today. We are going to rake in the money now. But the people who were hired at the beginning of the day got a day's wage. And then they got angry. And they said to the landowner, you cheated us. These people who came at the end of the day got a full day's wage and I worked all day long and you only gave me one day's wage. And the landowner says, wait a minute. Did we not agree at the beginning of the day that you would work for a day's wage? Why are you upset about me being generous? Generosity. You know, when we look at money, and when I work with folks in premarital counseling, we actually do a little exercise in the midst of premarital counseling about money. Because human beings relate to money in four principal primary ways. Sometimes for us, money can be status. I want to buy this thing. I want to live in a certain place. I want to have these things. I want to be able to use my money so that I can achieve the kind of lifestyle that, that gives me recognition. Some people can use money for security. I don't ever want to be without. I've got to hold on to it. I've got to make sure my 401k is just right. I've got to do whatever I can to make sure that I will never be without. I will never go hungry. Sounds like Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> I will never go hungry again. Some people use money for enjoyment. Enjoyment for themselves or others. The attitude is, you live only once, you might as well have a good time. Let's enjoy what we have. And let me give enjoyment to other people. And so they spend their money on enjoyment for themselves. They love to give money away to give joy and enjoyment to other people. Some people use money for control. I think the best example of that would be some sort of capital campaign, let's say at a school, where they're trying to raise money and a person comes up to the campaign chairman and says, you know, um, I'll give you $5 million, but it has to be used this way. 
Or parents controlling children, I'll give you this inheritance, but you have to live here or do this. Or spouses controlling one another through the use of currency of money. I can remember going to an African Methodist Episcopal church in a pulpit exchange years ago. I'd never been in an AME church, and so some of their practices were a little different than I was used to. And some of them had to do with money. Instead of having a plate just sitting here for people to put stuff in, they had two very formidable women dressed in all white who stood holding the offering plates at the front of the aisle. And when the pastor called for people to come give their gifts, the women stood there and they watched what went in the plate. And every once in a while, there would be this conversation and the woman would look up and intently and be going on and then you'd see the person reach in and pull out some more. I mean, they were checking. You're not generous enough. Dig a little deeper. And when I got into the pulpit, it almost took my breath away because there was this huge banner on the back of the church and it said, did you tithe today or did you just give God a tip? <laughs> Now maybe those are strategies that might work, but they strike me as a little bit like the Ten Commandments. You know, this is the law. This is how you put it all together. But I think if we want to see how God desires for us to use money, it's not any of those four strategies. It's generosity. And eventually God, realizing that we weren't getting it, gave up all his prestige and power and authority and left the heavenly realms and took the vulnerable form of a human being. God shows us and who he became in Christ Jesus what generosity looks like. Every once in a while, when the lotto gets really high, this urge in me is go buy a ticket. <laughs> Every once in a while, I actually go to the 7-Eleven and I buy a ticket. And I say to myself, gosh, if I won $20 million, how much fun I would have to give all this money away and to do all these wonderful things for all these people. But then God says to me, why are you waiting? Why do you need $20 million to do that? Day? I have blessed you beyond measure. I have been incredibly generous with you. Why are you using money any way other than the way I've shown you? Why can't you be the generous landowner? Why can't you start now reflecting my glory, sharing my abundance in the place that is hardest to do it with this? Why do you look for money and status, Derek? You have the best status you could ever have being adopted as my child. Why do you look for security? <laughs> Haven't you seen enough in this world to know that the security of this world is so transient and the only security you have is knowing that I have died and risen for you and that you are eternally mine and nothing, not even death itself, can separate you from me? Why are you using money for enjoyment? Enjoyment is fleeting, and what you're really looking for is joy. The kind of joy that I can give you. And why are you controlling it all? It's all a gift from me. You see, sisters and brothers, for the leaders of the temple, for us, we tend to want to make rules. 
And we use our money in all sorts of broken ways. But God gave it all up. Gave up all his riches and power and authority and came in human flesh. He became the generous landowner who delights in giving a full day's wage, everything, to everyone. What's stopping me? What's stopping you from being that generous now? Everywhere we go, with everyone we meet, how can we use this to change the world for God's kingdom.